Awesome, here we are, Energised to You, episode number 30. So today we're going to be interviewing one of the uh, PT trainers here at Beyond Transformations Gym, and one of my clients as, as well. This is Jenny Lee. Now we're continuing our theme of consistency and what we're doing with our daily healthy habits. It's interesting, I was uh, chatting with someone yesterday about uh, statistics around the New Year's resolutions, because today's the 8th or 9th of January. And the stats show that research will tell us that the average length of time people will continue with their New Year's resolution is 12 days. 12 days. So, 12 right. days <laughs> so you've got to get to at least the 13th of I'll January before you're in the winter. Yeah. Oh. So part of all that is continuing to be consistent. That's it. So um, I'll introduce Jen and I'll let you, well, we're going to interview you today, Jen, which is cool. Jen is one of our, my, my newest employees and trainers here. Um, congratulations. So how long have you been PTing for? About four or five months? Yeah. Five months. So Jenny is actually a martial artist as well. She's an ex-boxer. Jenny's jumped in the ring yes. and had a, had a fight. Two fights or one team? Two fights. So, um, you know, she's got probably a little bit more in common with me and Ray than Brendan does, which is in that way, in that context. We all like to punch people. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> and like to be punched. It's a good thing. It's good stress release. But Jenny is also a mother of three, okay? Yes. And a mother of a small child. Yes. Okay? And um, what we want to, what's a really good opportunity is when we get mums on here, we want to talk about from a mothering perspective of time management. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is like we've gone over time and we've gone over nutrition, but we're going to talk about consistency today. Okay. okay? So your training, you're, you're pretty consistent. I'll give you that as, as a, you know, I'm right. No, no, you're pretty consistent. <laughs> you're very, pretty, very good. And obviously, talk to us about your boxing preparation. Okay, because you know that's going to probably be a little bit. Being a mother of three yeah. and a boxer doesn't really, you know, it's not a general consistency no. too. So talk to us about your training for a boxing fight. Okay, you know? so my initial fight, I train consistently six days a week yep. for approximately a year. Yep. Um, sparring wise, so you've got to get your fitness up first. So sparring sure. was probably the last six months of that training. Yeah. Um, you but have consistently to six days a week. Consistently six mm-hmm. days a week. Twice a day, so twice a day, two hours, morning. yeah, two yeah. hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Wow! To be able to do that as a mother of three, I had to put myself first. Yep. And as a mother, that's we don't do that. Hundred percent. We're talking about being selfish with Brendan. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not done. But I, you know, I had a goal, and to achieve that goal, I had to be consistent. 100%. So, so what were some of the, you know, and this is a bit, like I said, we love, we had Suzanne, right, mother, you know, we've had um, a lot of mums on here, so I really like the opportunity because me, me and Ray do treat a lot of mums, they're only a pretty high percentage. What sort of advice would you give to the mums, but actually let's go back, with your boxing training, how did you do your nutrition? Talk to us about that with the family, yourself, you know, what were some of the tips and tricks that you did? Yes. I mean, it's pretty universal meal prep, but how did you operate I found it very difficult at first, but yeah. once I got into a rhythm, because um, my kids didn't eat what I was eating, it was yeah, just that plain and simple. Yeah. So it was two lots of meal preps. I found I went to the shops twice a week. So I yeah. did my children's shop and I did my own. So yeah. then I wasn't tempted that when I was doing the children's shop as well, like, oh yeah, they'll eat that. Oh, so I might two have trips to survive. Okay. Yep, sure. And that worked for me. And that was yeah. at different stages of the week? Yes. So yeah. one stage of the week was kids and yeah. one stage so of the week. So I wasn't tempted to put sure. things into and then, my shopping. <laughs> and then probably leading, and now going back to where your training was, you're training for four hours a day, six days a week, yeah. guys, it sucks. Like, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, 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 I, I can, <laughs> not for 20 months. But I, I, I would say I did it for 12 months. I did it for six to eight weeks at a time. Yeah. Two or three yeah. times a year. I, I started from the very bottom though. Yeah, yeah, I, I was 100%. Me, yeah. I was almost 100 kilos. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was a weight loss sort of thing initially, yeah. and then it went into that thing. Yeah, cool. so from 100 odd kilos to 65. You train kilos. twice a day in yourself? Twice a day. Wow, that's cool. That's unusual. Determination. Yes. Cool. So, Step let's fast forward a couple of years to where you're at now. Mm-hmm. So now you're, you know, you've got a, you've got a handful of PT clients under your belt. Yeah. You're yeah. running some classes. You're, um, you know, you're probably learning a lot about human psychology and working in this sort of environment. Obviously, you work with a lot of women that are in your yes. demographic as yes. well. That's a, and just for the small business owner out there, guys, a big part of the reason besides Jenny being awesome and having a boxing background was Jenny's very relatable to our clients. You know what I mean? She's the oldest one of my, um, my staff members. She's got a few, three years on me. 
and um, you know, and just by a bit, but I don't want to point that out. <laughs> and raise the oldest, and raise the oldest, you know, around dad over here. So. <laughs> but um, she's also a big part of why I brought Jenny into the business. She was a friend of a friend, she was really like, I liked her as a person, but she was super relatable to her clients, you know, and super relatable, you know, like I'm not very, like, it's funny how I picked the 35, 40 plus female demographic, and I'm probably the most unrelatable one out of all our clients. <laughs> But, dynamic yin and yang. Yeah, yeah, well, that's all. That's the dynamic that works, and I'm surrounded with yin. Yeah. But for you, what are some of the, what are some common themes you're seeing with your clients and our clients, and what would you suggest as a trainer to help them become consistent? You know. Oh, good question. Uh, well, with my own personal clients, we we get to know each other closely on a one-on-one -on -one basis. basis. Yep. Um, doing the classes, it's a little bit more. It's more difficult, obviously. Sure. So I get to know them more personally. Yeah. Um, the difference in the, there's no real difference in the clients. Um, yeah. Relatable wise, it's just getting to know them better. Sure, but the, what what I what I can suppose I'll rephrase this question. What are the common advice you're giving out and the common problems you see? Okay, because that's probably a better way. Because the thing is, is with this show, we want to we want to generate we want to yeah. provide value and go look, hey, here's some tips. And the thing that I love about having a mum and a motivated mum, okay, is that and also a mum that's a trainer. Mm -hmm. So you actually you actually be both ends of the scale. You've been yeah. the athlete sort of side, you're yeah. training four hours a day, and now you're on the other end of the spectrum where you're the trainer. Yeah. You know, so as I said, it was good to interest to see you went to the supermarket twice a week. Jesus, that's impressive. <laughs> but for your as a trainer now, I want to ask you as a trainer, okay? okay. What are the common challenges you see with your clients? Confidence. Confidence, okay. Um, a lot of them are mums. Yep. And, you know, our bodies have changed, yep. our image has changed, our mindset has changed about yep. ourselves. Yep. Um, so it's definitely common within our little group, I yep. guess, of mums that we can talk about. And yep. in training, um, how we differ our training. So sure. you know, obviously our abdominals aren't the same as they sure. used to be. Sure. So we work a lot on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's interesting. And that's because of childbirth, yeah. C sections, yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's go nutrition. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's a big one. And I think uh, that's in my opinion where a lot of mums get caught, a lot of parents want to say mums, mums and dads. So um, what would you say as in like speaking from your own experience as a mum of three kids and then also you train a lot of mums and have kids of similar age. What are some tips you would give around nutrition besides your own and things that you see that like, you just think are quite helpful? Yes. The introduction of new foods is okay. really hard. Um, to existing clients? To, to existing clients. Yeah. So, you know, try and plant based food to try and, you know, vegetarian. Like the one to moving into meats and things, whatever yeah. it might be, mm. and introducing it to the children. Sure. That's the hardest part of being a mum and trying to. Be on a healthy change. meal plan. It's yeah. a change. Yeah. Um, they don't work. like change. They don't like, they nah. like the chicken nuggets. They love their what you know, simple. Yeah. So trying to keep your nutrition simple yeah. but nutritious. Basic. Yes. Good. And I'm going to step in. Yes, please run right. in here. Yeah. Uh, now, yes. yeah, as, as a man in my sixties, <coughs> I've got two growing up sons, uh, both of whom were pretty much vegan, macrobiotic, very plant based. Eaters until they're the age of seven or eight. Yep. We control their diets. So, you know, when parents come to me and say, Oh, look, you know, my children don't want to eat this, I go, Well, you're the one responsible for that. 100%. And in our existing society, where our children's health is going downhill rapidly, Very good you point. parents, you are the ones responsible. Change it. Change it now. The next generation is going to be suffering. Yeah, uh, one thing we had Jane, a friend of ours, on who is a diabetes expert, and she was saying the growth of type two diabetes Absolutely. in children now is yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, and in, and even though I'm not a, a, a blood parent, but what I will say is, parents, it's your fault that the kids are getting it. Okay, so type two diabetes is self inflicted, right? Now you're thirty, oh, and you went eighteen and go, I want to drink him to coke and him to sugar. And you do, that's your own fault. But if your kid gets diabetes, it's your fault and you're the one that's got to change it. There's nothing that pisses me off more than parents that, that sit there and will 
Like, they feed their, their, I mean, a treat's good, you know what I mean? I think kids need to have lollies and snacks, I'm all about that, as that, but they're consistently feeding them their kids Cocoa Pops, they're consistently feeding their kids soft drink, and they're teaching them those bad habits from yeah. a young age, and they wonder why their kids are going to have type 2 diabetes by the time they're 21. It is, and yeah, and the part they even step in there, a lolly is not a treat, a lolly is a poison. The treats are the good food. Jen was in yesterday with her, how old is Chelsea? Five. Five-year-old daughter. Chelsea said there, a she had a little plastic bag of fruit and berries. That was her treat. And that's what we wanted to develop. Alright, so guys, we've got to wrap it up. That's episode 30. 30. 30. Awesome. That's Jen, leave your comments. I hope your mum's got some value out of that. You know? <laughs> um, like we're going to wrap it up. Please click like, share, hit the little share button. Any questions underneath, comment. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. There you go, Jen. Someone else here. You're good. You're good.